All right, so what I want to do tonight is make uh, a pencil. So this is what it looks like, and it holds stuff. Uh, I, make, I try to make them big enough to hold pencils, so you have a pencil, pencil box. But uh, you can make many size you want. For example, I made a small one here. Same thing. So let me talk a little bit about what I'm going to be doing first before we get started. Um, I got the idea from uh, American Woodturner. Um, you want to use the overhead? Get a picture of this? Do you have that? Yeah, yeah okay. Um, so this was in, I think, the August issue, if I remember right. And um, uh, Beth Ireland uh, did a nice article on this. It's just a couple of pages. So I would encourage you to read it. I'm going to show kind of her method, and I'm going to show uh, some other alternative ways of doing it as well. So here's, here's the full article. So it's a fairly simple thing. It's something that a beginner can do, or if you're not a beginner, if you've been turning a while, it's still a fun project. Um, so I want to say a little bit about uh, AAW. How many people are, are members of AAW here? OK. If you're not, you should think about joining, because uh, this is one of the big benefits, is this, uh, this uh, magazine, which comes out, is it six times a year, I think? Six times? And then. No, this is the, isn't this the AAW? Yeah, Journal of Associated. Yeah, I think this is it. I hope it is. That's what I'm advertising anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they also have an online um, uh, journal. Basically, it's for uh, beginning, tur mostly for beginning turners. And uh, I, I can't think of the name of it now. What's it called? Uh, fun fundamentals of Turning, yeah. So there's a lot of good articles in that. So I would encourage you, if you're not a member, to join. OK, so um, let's get started with the pencil. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple different methods of doing it. One is the way it's, in, it's kind of outlined here. And then I do a few things differently. So I'll talk about both ways. So let's first uh, start with the wooden part of the pencil, the part that's normally wood on the pencil. Oops. So what I do is I cut a square. Um, can you do this overhead? I don't know if you can see this or not very well from on top. But um, what I like to do is um, not just use a, a regular blank, a solid blank, but I like to glue two um, blanks together. Because if you look at a pencil, the way the lead's in, inside is they have two pieces of wood and they glue them together. So there's always a glue line if you look close in a pencil. I can't see it here, but if I had better vision, I could. So I glue two pieces of wood together. And the reason I use this size is because um, you can use a 2 by 4 plane it down a little bit, and I make it so it's 33 millimeters, glue them together, and that's just the width I want. So um, that's, that's what I do. And I'll show a little bit more about the dimensions. But for this one, I'm just using a square one. This is the way that's in the, art, in the journal. They start with a square block, and they make it round. Then they make it um, a hexagon from that. So let's go ahead and make this round, and I'll show you a way or two of make it turning it into a hexagon. So first, I just want to use the roughing gouge, rough spindle roughing gouge. Um, you always want to be safe, so I'm going to put this on. You may not be able to hear me as well with this on, but I probably won't talk as much with it on. So I'll just use this and make it round. Helps if I have the right end out. Okay. Okay, let's see, I'll get it all down to about this diameter.
you really shouldn't move the uh, tool rest while the lathe is turning. But I'm afraid I have a bad habit of doing that. Okay, so I want to try to get it pretty close to a cylinder. That's close enough for tonight, I think. So now, um, what I have to do is make it, what I want to get to is this. I want to make it look like a hexagon. So to do that, um, I'm going to mark six lines around here equally spaced. So there's several ways of doing it. I can do it like this. Several ways of doing that. Um, one way is to measure the diameter. So this is about 58. So then you can take a compass and set it for half of that. Yeah, because I'm not very good at math, so I can't do fractions. <laughs> Let's see, what did I say? What is that? It's 58, so I went. What's half of 58? Is that 29? Yeah. Okay, so that's about it. So now what you can do is uh, I'll, put a, I'll put a circle on here. Well, I got a couple circles on there. Anyway, I'll start right about here. And then, since this is the radius, it should go around exactly six times if, all's, if all is lined up right. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's perfect, which is pretty unusual. <laughs> okay, so now... <laughs> I was hoping I'd have a little, do we have a wider tool rest? Is that the widest one? I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll just uh, have to. So what I want to do now is put lines through here. So I'll just. Uh, I won't worry about that end so much. I'll just kind of. If I turn it the other way, you can actually see the lines. So I'll do it that way. Okay. Okay. So now, you know, the fun part of these projects is when you're actually doing stuff on the lathe, the lathe's turning. Now this is not the fun part. Because now what you have to do is remove that material between these lines. So I'm going to do it with a plane. You can do it with a rasp. You can do it with... Uh, sandpaper, however you want to do it. But if I can get this on, this is a little bit of a nuisance, but let's see if I can do this. Um, should be a piece here. So what I want to do is put this vise on here so I can hold, oops, thank you, so that I can hold this in place and use a plane, a hand plane. Okay, let's see if I can. All right, so I'm all thumbs. Yeah, John, you want to just put your finger right there between the uh, vice? <laughs> oh, maybe I better do this. <laughs> okay, so just give me a second here to get this. Now, when Mike edits this, he can take all this out. <laughs> but you have to sit through it. Okay. I mean, may, this may not be worth taking the time for, because all I want to do is show you how to flatten between. So I'm going to clamp 
a clamp in here. Oops. At home, I don't do it this way, of course. <laughs> I have a way to clamp these easier. So then, I'll just put this in. Let's put one up that doesn't have a, they all have knots. Not as many. I used a two by four for this because I'm cheap. That's a little bit, there we go. Okay, so now what I have to do is take the material out between these two lines. So if you, you can use a hand plane, that's probably as simple as any way to do it. And it's not a lot of material because it's almost, it's kind of slippery. Okay. In case you're worried, I'm definitely not going to do all six sides. So I'm getting pretty close here. I went over the line there a little bit, but that's okay. That's good enough for that side. So I'm, you just do that six times. You rotate it, do it, and what you wind up with is something like this, okay? You can use a rasp to do it, you can, you can sand it. If you have a, like a disc sander, you can just hold it up and any way you wanna do it, but just have to get six sides. Okay, so all this set up for just that. Because now I'm gonna start with this one. Now there are other ways of getting this six-sided piece. So that's what I wanna talk about next a little bit, is an, a way to do it that I think is much simpler and it also has the advantage that it uses a table saw, which means that if you don't have a table saw, you have an excuse for getting one. <laughs> Needs to go down a little bit further. Okay, so here's. Uh, Here's how I do these. This is how I, I normally would do it. Okay, so I want to put these out here. And I need this. So here's, um, here's the idea. If you look at this picture, can you see that picture? Is that? Overhead. Yeah, overhead. Okay, the if you look at this picture, Notice there's a rectangle here, and inside I have a hexagon, okay? So the idea is if you make the rectangle the right size, like this size, for example, then, let's put it there, then all you have to do is make uh, four cuts, and you've got a hexagon. One cut, let's see, I want to do it right here. One cut would be like this. One cut would be here. One cut's there, and one cut's there and you get a hexagon. Now, it's critical though that you get the right dimensions here. If you don't have the right dimensions, you'll have, you know, you'll have it too wide here or else it'll be too short on one side or you just won't be right. But once you get, the, once you get it set, that same setting for where the fence is and what the angle on the blade is, you make four cuts with that same setting. So it's just one setting. Okay, so how do you do it? Well, here's, the, here's a little bit of math for it. Um, the key formulas are this, if the width here is W, and the height here is H. The side length is S, which is half of W. That's this formula. And the other one is H over W has to be square root of three over two, or approximately 0.866, okay? So what that says, for example, is, <laughs> don't, you don't have to remember this. This is on the website, so you just, the number 8, 0.866 is the only one you have to really know. And also, you don't even have to know that if, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so here's what you do. Here's how I do it. First of all, I take the width. Let's say I want to do uh, 66 millimeters. There's a reason I use that, and the reason is because um, when I divide that by two, because I'm going to make this in two pieces so I have a seam, when I divide that by two, that's just a little bit wider than a one and a half inch board. So what I can do is take a one and a half inch board, run it through the plane a couple times, get a nice surface to glue, and then and get it exactly 33 millimeters, 
glue it together, and I got 66 across this way. So what's this distance? Well, to get that distance, you take the um, width, which in this case is 66, and you multiply it by 0.866, and you get 57.2. So that's how, how uh, what this dimension is. I knew this. <laughs> I knew you did, but I was telling for everybody else, though, John. Okay, so um, here's another place where you might have to spend some more money and get another tool, and that is a 3D printer. 3D printers are fantastic for making jigs and things like that. So what I did is I printed out a rectangle that's 66 by 50, what was it, 58.2, I believe? 57.2. 57.2, I think. Well, whatever it is. <laughs> so, so that's the size. So when I set the saw, I just use this. I don't measure anything. I just set the saw blade so it's that wide, you know, and that high. So it's, it's very simple, no measuring. Okay, so that's how I get the rectangle. Does everybody understand how I do that? Now, if you don't want to use the one with the seam, that's fine. Just use a bigger um, blank and then make it this size. Okay, um, then what I do, okay, so this kind of, I don't know if you can see that or not. That illustrates the same thing as here. What I do then is I have to set the saw to make these four cuts. So here's what I use. Now this is um, a jig that I use to set the, um, is that overhead? Yeah, move back towards you a little bit. Okay, maybe I'll just set it there so you don't have to. Okay, so what I do is um, I set the fence so it goes from, from here to there. So this, this side's on the fence. And right here at this point, um, that's where the blade, which is set at 30 degrees, comes out of the saw. Okay, so it's very simple. I just put this on the on the table saw, set the blade at 30 degrees, move the fence so it's up against, I've got, my, I've got it set. So I don't do measuring there either. Okay, so then I just run it through four times, and I wind up with this. Okay, it's very simple. So, and it's especially nice if you're making several, like I made a batch of, I don't know, five or six or something like that. So I, once I got it set, I just ran them all through. It was really very efficient. Okay, so however you do it, there's a magnet in there. However you do it, you want to get to this point. So there's at least a couple of ways of doing it. Okay? So if you have questions, be sure to let me know. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I put two for a bring backs. So uh, you win the bring back. So if you want to buy some tickets, you know, you get. <laughs> Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll give them to club members. But uh, if this goes on the web, the people on the web have to pay for it. <laughs> Okay, so let's see, what's the next step? The next step then is I wanna start with this, the hexagon, and I wanna get this, a hexagon with uh, hollowed and uh, tin in here. Okay, so let's do that. Except I'm not gonna hollow it, I'll just, oops, I maybe should move this. Oh yeah, one more thing I have that I 3D printed that's very helpful is I have to find the center here and I want to get it really close. So I printed out a, uh, a hexagon with a hole in it. So I can just put it over the end, put my pencil there and I got the center. I don't have to do any fiddle around, no measure it, anything, just stick it on there. That comes in the kit too. <laughs> okay, so first thing I want to do is put a tenon on. So I'm going to put a tenon what I, what I like to do is look at it, and if there's an area where it's kind of rough or something where I don't, you know, where I'd like to take it off, that's where I'd sharpen the pencil. So that's where I would want to put the angle. I want to put the tenon on the opposite side. No, I want to, I'm sorry. I want to put the tenon on that side, the side where I'm going to be sharpening it. So I, I'll just do it there. It doesn't really matter for the demo. So make a tenon, however you like to make a tenon. I have a tenon maker here. Oops, that's not the right one, though. This one's the right one. So basically, it's just a square piece of steel, and it sharpens so you can see there's a little bit of angle there. Can you see that? Is that visible? Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it here and, and go in and take a little bit out to make a tin. I'm supposed to wear this. So, okay, so now I can chuck it from this side. That's good. So, this comes off. That comes off too. <laughs> We've Why is that? There we go. Okay. Okay, so I need to knock this out so I can put the uh, chuck in. I think that's bent now. I know it's bad. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Where's my key? Here it is. to get a good tenon, you want to make sure that the jaw, the jaws of the chuck are right up against the edge of the wood there. So you want to make sure that's good, good straight uh, cut in there. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do next is make, I want to make this little tenon on this side. So this is what fits the ferrule like that. So I want to make it so it just fits. Now you can make this first or second, it doesn't matter. If you make this first, then you have to fit it here. If you make this second, then you make the fit in this one. Either way you want to do it. I'm going to do it fitting, I already have one here, so I'm going to fit it here. But I'll show you how to make these in a little bit. Okay, so um, let's see here. Now you notice when I'm doing this, that I'm getting some, uh, you know, I'm getting some nasty, I'm getting kind of a bad edge there. So the thing to do is take a skew chisel and come in and make a nice, just straight cut in there. And that way, when you do this, we get a little better edge. Let's see how that looks. I think I kind of slanted a little bit, but. Okay, so see this edge is much nicer now. So I need to go a little bit more. You can just use a parting tool to do this cut. Okay, so now I have to fit it. So I'm going to take this off and see how close I am. Okay. What was that? So I'm pretty close. Um, so you have to do a little trial and error here to get it to where it's. Uh, so I don't want to use that one. I want to use. Oh, this one is what I want, yes. I'm going to taper it a little bit on the end there. That way I can see if it's uh, how close I am to fitting. Well, I didn't need to taper it. There it is. <laughs> okay, and that's just about right. 
You have to watch two things. One is to get the diameter about right. This is just a little bit loose, but not bad. I'm going to glue it on, and I'll probably use epoxy, so if it's a little gap, it's not going to really matter too much. Uh, and then you also, I also want it so that it sits right in here. I don't want a gap between, and this one's actually pretty close already. Yeah, so I'm going to leave it like that. So that's what that is. 